The whole story started with Turkey's adventure with Aaron Goldsmith, previously named as Reza Zarab, who has been riding his horse at full gallop at his farm in Miami. The songs he previously composed became so popular and sing by many people. He had a life full of love, betrayal and intrigue as in her songs. Zarab, who was in his 20s, first entered the heart of Azeri singer Gunal Zeynalova and then Ebru Gündesh with his expensive gifts. Prince Charming was born in Tabriz, Iran, and then came to Turkey. He was planning each of his steps. He was at the core of the magazine world at the age of 25. And it was not a coincidence that he made the entrance from the magazine world. The next gear of this wheel, which started with the philanthropist businessman pose, was politics. He entered their hearts with luxury gifts. However, politics was nothing like the world of magazine. Zarab's wheel of dirty money and bribery was noticed by the police. Jakob Seigler. He was born in Berlin as a child of an expatriate family. He returned to Turkey at an early age and became the chief of police. It was his profession that spoiled his modest and ordinary life. He was the director of Istanbul Department of Combating Financial Crimes. He was used to the police thief chase. But the file he tracked in 2012 changed everything. The crime network he was going after was larger than expected. So the cops were imprisoned instead of the thieves. We are not escaping to anywhere. We are all here. If you are going to apply to our statements, just call us and we are ready to do that. If you will examine our residence, we are waiting at our residence. You can come at any time. We worked as judicial police officers. This means every operation, every tapping, every monitoring, every letter included in the investigation report has been executed by the orders of the Chief Public Prosecutor's Office. So what happened that the roles were reversed in the police thief chase? The answer of this question can be found in a phone conversation made eight years ago between a father and his son. The number one actor was Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Because he set up a wheel of corruption and bribery, he earned great amount of money through his shares and commissions obtained from auctions. There isn't only one wheel. There are wheels of many people. But the main wheel is Erdogan. There are some names in between. They're the ones who get commissions. But the main one is the Prime Minister of the period. The system has been exposed, and it is not just an individual case of corruption. The plot set up by Erdogan had been uncovered. This was very critical, and since Erdogan was aware of this, he staged a coup against the judiciary. He staged a coup in Turkey, arrested judges and prosecutors, and avoided scrutiny himself. This actually means that the 17th of December 2013 is the date the constitution was suspended. It was cancelled in Turkey. Mesut Yilmaz, deputy director of the Istanbul Police Intelligence Department. He was the first to open the file of the corruption investigation. We had been receiving reports about Rıza Zarab. The reports suggested that he was walking around with bags full of money. We monitored and taped Zarab's phone and his contacts. After monitoring, all the recordings and footage were documented and sent to the Fraud and Financial Corruptions Department of the Police. 
The police were tracking the crime network and the network were tracking the police. Then Muammer Güler stepped in. Muammer Güler forwarded some photos to our department. Rıza Zarrab had sent these photos to him claiming that he was being followed. Our department then sent these photos to the chief of police. The breaking point of the story occurred in those days. The officers in the intelligence department were appointed elsewhere on the ground of the Gezi events. One person remained in office, not to say at the discretion of the prime minister. The chief of police then sent me a message asking me to write a letter to the prime minister. I wrote a letter to Pape Erdogan and explained to him that I would like to keep my current position for another year as my child was still attending school there. I managed to delay my transfer with a letter to Tape Erdogan. In the meantime, the investigation into 1725 December corruption allegations was continuing in the fraud department. Since I delayed my appointment through Tape Erdogan, they did not remove me from the case. My involvement in the investigation continued. Despite the pressure, the financial branch police tracked the money. The National Intelligence Agency warned Erdogan of the upcoming operation as well. When all the clues in the follow-up file were tied together, billions of dollars in the corruption wheel had emerged. At first glance, the incident seemed like a breach of the USA embargo on Iran and Zarab's bribery network. But then it proved how billions of dollars of Turkish people in the file stolen. How do they break the embargo? They're showing it with fake documents, as if they were selling the goods to Iran. They were sending this money through to Iran in cash, using the methods Reza drew on board in America. As we said, wheat is brought and invoices are issued. Money is taken from the Hulk Bank. He cuts his own commission from this money, distributing bribes to the ministers in cash, up to the highest authority and sending the rest to Iran. They send money as banknotes and gold, and we see that they mostly work through Dubai. This is how they break up the embargo. So who lost? Of course, Turkey lost, Turkish companies lost, businessmen lost, and SMEs lost. In other words, companies that could buy and sell goods to Iran lost. Naturally, the country has become a very poor in economic terms. The money that was supposed to go into the treasury went into the pockets of the ministers, AKP and Erdogan's family. The farmers or tradesmen who were supposed to earn money by selling medicine or food to Iran could not earn it. What did France do while the embargo continued? An opportunity was provided to some countries. This is stated as you can buy natural gas from Iran, but in return, you can give basic food or medicine instead of money. It was an embargo imposed by the United States and France took advantage of it, but Turkey lost. It was this name that tied the members of the government to himself. A 26-year-old could exert control over members of parliament. As stated by the minister Muammer Güler, I would lie down in front of him if he wished. He's bribing ministers, there's no one he can't buy. He changed the paradigm in this regard. There's a term called Chinoyova. They siphoned Turkey's Hulk Bank with fake documents. He negotiated bribes with ministers and provided prostitutes to people coming from the BEA. He's been involved in this dirty work. In fact, he had a close relationship with the Erdogan family and gave 40 or $50,000 bags to Emine Erdogan as gifts. It is actually Reza Zarab who gave those bags. Reza Zarab gets Turkish citizenship with the help of Egemen Bagush. There are millions of dollars in those shoe boxes. Think about it. A 26-year-old comes to Turkey and makes so many politicians lie down in front of him. He discarded the entire legal system and trampled the police and the judiciary. And he got so reckless that he dared to open an office in Istanbul's Grand Bazaar to issue fabricated documents. He turned Turkey upside down with these fabricated documents. An operation was launched against the first gear of the wheel by the order of the prosecutor on 17th of December 2013. 
millions of dollars of dirty money, which was stored in shoeboxes, suitcases, and warehouses, were seized. However, the government impeded, politicized, and tried to cover up the investigation. Following the December 17 operation, the prosecutor was dismissed by the government and Ekrem Aydiner was appointed in his place. After examining the evidence, he decided to issue the arrest warrants. Ekrem Aydiner also extended Reza's detention twice because he believed that there was substantial evidence. What Aydiner did afterwards was quite interesting. He decided to stop the investigation and abandon the legal proceedings against the alleged offenders. Instead, he prepared an indictment for the officers. He asked for life sentences for the officers. I think 17 to 25 December is the beginning of the collapse and constitutes the transition from a defective state system to a tribal state. We can define this period as theft and bribery that became the norm and bureaucrats who did their job properly, they're the ones who are punished. It is an area in which the police is not chasing the thief, on the contrary, the thieves are chasing the police. The money that was seized on the 17th of December was returned to its owners with interest. Footage of bags filled with money and gold being carried through the corridors of a courthouse were broadcast. In those days, a suitcase was carrying the summary of everything that had happened. Zarab's suitcase was full of money. The police found it in his house. There were some people who even claimed that the police put these millions of dollars there. This is a tragic, funny incident. They claimed that the police officers put it there. They claimed it was a setup. Reza Zarab got those money with interest through his man. The secret in this sitting is the money. What did Reza Zarab say on the tapes? Once he realized the atmosphere in the country, he stated that there is no one that I cannot buy with my money. And he was even able to reach out and meet the Prime Minister. The director of the Hulk Bank is at his disposal. The ministers are at his disposal. What does Muammar Gular say? I will lie down in front of you, Reza. I'll do anything for you. No one can touch you. There is a minister who writes references to Chinese banks so that Reza Zarab gets away with his misconducts. While Reza and his men having a phone conversation, they were saying almost half of the cabinet will be a reference for us and laughing afterwards. So they had bought a lot of people with money. Of course, we should never forget the following statement there. Reza Zarab was expressing the gravity of the matter. While saying that you will pay the prostitutes in advance, he was explaining how important the bribery was to be able to buy the public servants and accordingly make them do whatever you want. Court reporter Bülent Ceyhan was one of those whose life was ruined due to the fact that he was tracking the suitcase full of dirty money as a requirement of his profession. When the arrest warrant was issued for me, I had to leave my country, my home and my family. While some people were carrying money with suitcases, I had to go to a country that I did not know with a small bag and had to live as a refugee. Trying to cover up the 17th December operation and dismissing the police officers and judges, Erdogan closed another investigation file on 25th of December 2013 without allowing its initiation. They wanted us to deal with ordinary thieves and murderers and not to touch some people. It has not been told to me so far, but we witnessed it in the investigation. And when I touched those people, Turkey derailed from the rule of law.
Erdogan suspended the constitution, dissolved the judiciary and the police. The reason for this state of panic was the documents in the investigation file prepared by prosecutor Muammar Akkash. This file revealed the zoning corruption and a larger gang created by the hand of the government and included bribery negotiations with people who had been tracked for allegedly financing terrorism in the international arena. Yasin set his eyes on Etilad Police School. More precisely, they set up a Bosphorus company after Bilal Erdogan proposed this land to them. Then this company took the land and moved the Etilad Police School to another unknown location. However, since this land is normally belonging to the treasury, it would be worth billions of dollars if it were tendered. They said, let's set up such a mechanism that we can buy this land before it is tendered. And this is where the unfair income starts. The mechanism they set up here is as follows. First, they put the land in the earthquake zone, even though the land is resistant to earthquakes. As soon as they put the land in the earthquake zone, the law of the Boaziji municipality is bypassed. The urban transformation law comes into play and the Ministry of Environment and Urbanization becomes the sole authority. The ministry can sell this land to anyone. It can approve the project of any person and do whatever it wants. They passed such a law and this law was enacted by the AKP within the framework of the urban transformation law. The land can be sold without a tender as soon as they put it in the earthquake zone area. Of course, this land is given by Bosphorus 360. It was given for 430 million liras. That's how they give away billions of dollars worth of land below its actual value and that's how the unfair income is generated. If you, if you like, we can, uh, I can introduce you, we can give you some reference to a local Istanbul-based architecture from there, working with us on this project in Cartel. A pool was formed at the same time. Sabah and ATV group was bought with the money obtained in this pool. The most lucrative state tenders were awarded to the businessmen who contributed to this pool. Commissions were gained again while these tenders were granted. And these commissions were shared by Erdogan, his family, his relatives and ministers. Perde önünde dini bütün örnek bir siyasetçi Erdoğan who appears to be an exemplary religious politician and goes on like that is behind the scenes making speeches about money with his son and daughter forcing businessmen to pay tribute pushing those who don't and making the older ones cry in frustration at the time all government tenders were given to this gang of five on the 25th of June, the alleged members of the organized crime syndicate were investigated and closely monitored. If you had seen the evidence gathered against them and prosecuted them at the time, you would have saved the country from losing millions of dollars. The Erdogan family was in panic. He moved millions of dollars of dirty money from their homes to other addresses and attempted to launder it. How did they transfer the money was reflected in both phone conversations and documents. Among the methods of taking money out from the house included a musical formula as well. The money was transported from the house to the Golden Horn Congress Center in large containers with large music boxes. This is how Erdogan transferred millions of dollars to the Golden Horn Congress Center. Erdogan found his way out in Silivri. He agreed with the names who were imprisoned in the operations that he once supported. These names were known as representatives of the Gladio and Deep gangs in the country. While they were getting out of prison on Erdogan's orders, the police officers were sent to jail. 
Polisim ben polis. Hırsız. Polis. 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 Gördün mü? Bulur yakalar. Savcı olarak ben bunu yapmam gerekiyordu. I did what I had to do as a prosecutor. In other words, you cannot call a police officer not to catch a thief or call a doctor not to examine a patient who has arrived in the emergency service. And I did my duty as a prosecutor, just as they were supposed to do the duty. I want to emphasize that our main objective was to protect and defend the honor of the state. Today people are saying, where are the judges? Where are the prosecutors? Where are the police officers? They should have stood up for the police who struggled to save the honor of the state at the time. We did not back down to pressures. We did our job. Let me put it this way. Today the police department and the justice system are not doing their jobs and that it is the reason why they cannot uphold the law. If the police and prosecutors who investigated the corruption had been supported at the time, they would still be around to investigate the many crimes committed in Turkey today, including the allegations put forward by Sedat Peker. Erdogan had made the overall picture more complicated and inextricable, as in this famous scene from the movie Mr. Bean. Just when he thought he had figured everything out, then Reza Zarrab fled from being a philanthropic businessman and became a confessor with the documents he packed in his suitcase. Zarrab, who went to America, confirmed that everything that had emerged with the corruption operation was true and explained the wheel of crime openly in court. Erdogan sees the 17th of December as an attack, a coup attempt on him. The corruption, bribes, all these allegations are not true according to him. However, the lawyers of the Halkbank case, whose fees were paid by Erdogan himself, confirmed these claims in courts in the US. Bu konuda tabii ki bizi işin içine sokmaya gayret edenler var. Bu noktada avukatların çalışması var. Ve o avukatlar These lawyers stated at the first trial in the US that Reza Zarrab is corrupt. This is what Turkish lawyers said. They accepted the position that politicians and bureaucrats had accepted bribes. If Turkey could take matters into its own hands and apply the rule of law independently, we would not be in the current situation. Both the government and the opposition are responsible for the current collapse in the justice system. During the corruption investigation, the police, prosecutors and judges were the most innocent as they exposed their dirt. The wiretappings are in official records of the state have been ignored by Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his crew. Even though we have emphasized the existence of it till today, why don't we listen to these wiretappings together in a great silence? What Zarab had told the world was already learned by Turkey on the 17th of December 2013. The opposition and some people did not drop corruption issue from their agenda until 15th of July 2016. But despite being concerned about the corruption, they ignored what happened to the police officers who exposed these corruptions. These police officers had been in prison for about seven years. Their wives and children were arrested. Nobody stands up for them. The opposition fully used the corruption files. But the police, who exposed the biggest corruption in the history of Turkey, and whose families became the victims, they were ignored and the opposition did not take any action regarding their situation. I believe these police officers showed a great example of courage and saved Turkey's honor by taking a huge risk. In particular, taking the Iranian dimension of the case into account. The police officers involved in this have been in prison for eight years. The state is completely at the disposal of the palace, with its police, prosecutors and bureaucracy. Even though they have been working on it for eight years, they could not find the slightest wrongdoing by Jakob Seigler and the other police officers. The country has fallen into such a downward spiral and continues to go down 
Because everyone just stood by and watched the 1725 December scandals from a distance as they accepted the government's narrative. If they are sincere in claiming that they want to investigate the corruption allegations, they have to reopen the 1725 December cases. The cost of ignoring corruption was huge. Erdogan, who tried to legitimize this situation and even worsen the conditions with the one-man regime after July 15, had a negative balance sheet. One US dollar, which was 2 lira in December 2013, increased to 14 lira eight years later. This meant the gradual impoverishment of the people. The stolen money does not seem to be going directly from our pockets, but indirectly the resources of the country are being looted. In other words, while those billions of dollars stolen, it feels like nothing goes out of your pocket, but in fact it would contribute to you as a salary increase, or it can contribute to the country's infrastructure like roads and state assets. But we, as citizens, cannot feel such repercussions unless it touches our pockets directly. Look, the 17 to 25 turn, he adopted a tribal state style that was not accountable to anyone. He generated a family business, about $128 billion. Have you ever heard any explanation from the regime or central bank officials about how and when this money was spent? In Turkey, there is no authority who is supposed to ask questions in the absence of such an explanation. 17 to 25 December is a milestone event where these arbitrariness started and the groundwork for the complete transformation of the bureaucracy took place. After the 17th to 25 December, there is no longer any burden of accountability, because despite the presence of corruption and bribery, which is the biggest scandal of the Republic of Turkey, public support for the government was, had not declined. So citizens and constituents contributed to this undesirable situation to take place. Turkey, which ranked 53rd among 176 countries in the world corruption list in 2013, ranked 86th among 180 countries in 2020. As such, it fell into the category of very poor countries. When people started to ask about the missing $128 billion lost from the country's central bank, the damage was already done, and the responsible one already fled to Miami. But, but why not? Reza! Dolandım ve aslında Reza Zarrab'la ilgili bilgilerin çok büyük bir kısmını Everyone was surprised when Adem Yavuz Arslan, who achieved a significant journalistic accomplishment, found Reza Zarrab with his new identity years later. I tried to talk to him and had a brief interview. He was shocked when he saw me, and he was quite concerned by this being revealed. Being revealed with his new identity, new address and new life was not something that he expected. On the one hand, Reza Zarab is living a new life with million dollar horses in a million dollar mansion in Miami. On the other hand, the police officers who documented his corruption, tricks and bribes have been languishing in jail for about eight years. Even though he did not write the lyrics, Reza Zarab found a new love, a new job and a new identity as in the song. However, nothing much has changed in Turkey. At that time, everything was documented, including the activities of the Gang of Five, how all tenders were given to them and how the pro-government media was formed, and the way that Reza Zarrab brought the money from abroad. In fact, what has been revealed so far could be considered a small portion of this ring of organized crime. I believe that if the corruption investigation was not stopped at that time, these crimes could have been prevented and the country would not have fallen into such web of organized crime. This is the point where the foundations of the organized crime syndicate were established. All the culprits investigated at the time continue to operate today. Jakub Saigalu, chief of police to disclose the wheel of the gang that robbed Turkey's treasury and other police officers was still in prison. His child, who was born two months after his arrest, is now seven years old. 
Kenan Sharmin perceives his father as the policeman imprisoned by the thief, like the children of other police officers in prison. They used to visit me to kiss my hand. Now I need to travel to see them. Rather than living in disgrace, I would prefer to live my life as Ömer Köse's wife. Turkey talks about how Zarab betrayed his first love eight years later in the magazine programs. Erdogan's wheel, which Zarab disclosed through drawing the links in the court, continues to turn. Together we witnessed how a government robbed a state. In Turkey, which encountered the costly bill of the corruption wheel, everyone knows that the stolen money is still kept in shoeboxes in some houses.